Hey, Juan Jake here for CodeLama.com, here to talk about Java lessons and Java programming in CodeLama. So, last we talked about the Blockly course, we talked about drag and drop coding, we learned how to navigate our world and how to learn how to code using simple drag and drop coding. Once you get through the entire course of Blockly lessons, you're ready for more advanced coding and Java is the perfect language to start learning from because once you learn Java then you can branch out into all kinds of other languages whether it be C sharp C C plus plus and so on like there's a ton of other languages to, to learn out there once you learn Java you can learn everything else so let's let's take a moment here and let's learn how to navigate the code llama world and then actually learn how to code in Java at the same time and navigate those lessons so we're going to launch into Intro to Java Programming here. And it'll ask us to activate the Unity Player. Okay, so let's navigate to the world. We're going to find our way to our first lesson. And yes, we want to go with our lesson here. And so now we see here the lesson page, similar approach to the Blockly lesson. We have our lecture slides here which we could also replace with a video, uh, depending on which approach you take to your lessons. Of course, you have your questions down here, your exercises and examples, no different than the exercise and examples we see here in the lesson. So, our first Java program, our second Java program would be ideally matched down here. And this time around, instead of the Blockly window, we have here our Java coding window. And below it, we have Run, Reset, and Reveal Answer. If I go Reveal Answer, it'll show me the actual answer it's looking for. And of course, we have here Walla in our little mini game world here to basically act out anything that we write into the code window here. So that's what makes this a lot of fun is that, is that we're going to learn how to code in Java using our own avatar character, which you can change at the game menu. So let's start off with just writing some code here. I'm going to blank out what's here. We'll just simply say public class hello, and we'll do a public static void main. And of course, you'll learn all about this code in the less lesson slides above. Let's just do a simple hello. So we'll say system.out.println hello there. And let's run this. Now, uh, Celis is the wrong answer, but that's okay because we use a different answer than what was expected. But we'll see here in the minigame window that Walla is saying, hello there. Let's introduce some more code here. Let's say int temperature equals 25. Let's add some more text below it, say system dot out dot println the temperature or temp is and then plus temperature and if we run this of course tell us wrong answer again because the code is not what it's expecting and now it's saying the temp is 25 in the window but let's get into making Walla do some stuff, some fun stuff. Now in the Blockly world, it was they, we had a whole category of drag and drop blocks there that we could drag and drop different moves. Well, in Java, things are a little more advanced now because now we're starting into some real coding here. So we have an object that we're going to use. It's called base method. Call it bm equals new base method. And let's just make him jump. So we'll say bm.jump. And you'll put in a speed. We'll just keep it to 1 for now. And we'll hit run. 
No wrong answer again, but we saw Walla jump there. Let's make him punch. So bm.punch. We'll run this. And he threw a punch. And let's make a punch and a kick. Punch and kick. There you go. So now we have two moves that are there as well. So that was making moves uh, through the base method object there. So that's how we would actually use, that's how we would actually make our character do some funny moves. So we have two options right now. We can we can print out stuff to the screen using those bubbles and we can make moves using the base method object. Now the final thing I'll talk about is getting input. So getting input's a little bit different here in this world than your typical Java program, but we'll introduce it none the same. So let's ask for some input here. So we're gonna say import java.util.scanner and let's create our scanner object. So scanner is the object that we use to basically take an input from the user and predominantly all program that out there are expected to take input from the user. So this is this is probably one of the most heavily used pieces of code you're going to use. So we'll say scanner input equals new scanner system.in and let's leave our code up there. So we're going to say system.out.println enter a number and we'll say int x is equal to input dot next int and let's run this. So the first thing you'll see is that a pop-up comes up here and says how many inputs are you entering and if we look here we are just asking for one number so we're saying input dot next int once so I'm just going to say one and what's that number? So now it's saying please give the input here so enter a number what number do I want to enter? I'm going to say 45 and I'm going to hit OK. And now it'll say wrong answer. It did its punch. It did its kick. And it's going to say enter a number because that's what we asked for. And then nothing because we didn't output the result, of course. So let's modify our code a little bit more to output that value back to the user. So we'll say system.out dot println you said and then plus x now we should get the output that we're looking for so we'll run it it's going to say how many inputs do you have we just have the one input so we'll set hit one what's our input so we'll get to say 45 and now it'll say wrong answer but we did a punch we did a kick we'll say enter a number It'll say, you said 45. So this is one example of taking an input and displaying it back to the user. Well, if you had two inputs, let's try that. So let's say system.out.println, enter another number. And we'll say, Let's use a decimal number. So double y is equal to input dot next double. And we'll print that back to the user. So we'll say system dot out dot println you said and then y. Let's change it to you now said. So we have a bit of a different line of text there. So you now said Y. So let's review our code here. So first of all, we're making our, our character punch and then kick. We ask for a number from the user. It's a whole number integer value. So it's an X. We we'll say you said X. So we're repeating it back to the user. Now we're asking for another number. This time it's a decimal number of type double, calling it Y. And we're going to say it back to the user by saying you now said and then Y. 
So let's run this. It's saying how many inputs do we require? So this time we've asked for two numbers. So we asked for a whole number int, we asked for a decimal number y. So we're going to say that we have two numbers to enter. Now it's saying please give your input. So this is our first input, so we're asking for x, so we'll say 23. And then it's asking us for input again. It's asking us this time for y, so we'll say 2.3. And we'll say OK. It'll tell us wrong answer, but we did a punch. Kick. Enter a number. You said 23. Enter number, another number, and you now said 23. So there you have it. We've explored the world. We've launched our Java lesson. We've explored what our Java lesson's all about. We did a small example by just trying to output to the screen. Then we added in the base method object, which allows us to do moves like punch, kick, and all kinds of other moves, which are taught in the modules that are already included in Code Llama. And then finally, we learned how to take an input. So we learned how to ask for an integer number, and we learned how to ask for a decimal number. So there you have it. I'm Jawad Sheikh for CodeLama.com. Hope to see you in the online world learning how to code. Thank you, take care, and bye for now.